Hey there, Wireweaver. Today we're going to make this quick and easy sweater pin. This is a very basic Celtic style penannular brooch that's suitable for use with hand knitted or crocheted garments. I love to crochet in my free time, so this isn't just a fun little project to help you hone your hammer techniques and finishing skills. It's also a practical accessory that you can wear, gift, or sell. My name is Wendy, and I'm the Wireweaver behind Door 44. If you want to learn to make wire jewelry, this channel's for you. You'll find a complete list of tools and materials below in the video description. I'll introduce the tools as I use them in today's demonstration, and I'll be using just two gauges of wire today. You'll need about 11 inches of 12 gauge dead soft wire to form the pin and then we'll use about 10 inches of 26 gauge dead soft wire for the simple binding that you see here. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Now two tools that you're always going to use in any of my tutorials, you're going to need a ruler and a fine point permanent marker of some sort. And to get started, we're going to cut about seven and a half inches of dead soft 12 gauge wire. I'm using copper wire today, of course, but again, you can use any type of solid jewelry wire that you like. This will work in sterling silver, brass, or bronze as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and measure and mark about seven and a half inches. Just put a little mark there. And now because this is 12 gauge wire, I use a pair of heavy duty wire cutters that I per picked up at my local hardware store. These are not specifically for jewelry making. These are actually for electrical work. And you do need a pair of heavy duty pliers to cut 12 gauge wire. You don't want to use your jewelry wire cutters to cut this heavy of a gauge. These cutters are typically rated for certain gauges of wire, and these are probably up to about 16 gauge. My Swanstrom Super Flush cutters are actually rated to cut for up to 14 gauge dead soft wire, but I never cut anything over 16 gauge wire with these pliers. I always use my heavy duty wire cutters, and that's because it just saves your tools, and because we're going to sand the ends of these wires Anyway, we're going to file them off, file them smooth, and paddle them. We're not concerned about getting a super clean cut, so it's okay if we get a chisel tip on the end there because, like I say, we're going to end up filing this, paddling these ends, and then filing them anyway. So don't worry about that. But do invest, if you're going to be using heavy gauge wires, do invest in a, an inexpensive pair of heavy duty cutters that will easily cut heavy gauge wires. And then the next thing we're going to do, of course, we talked about paddling the ends. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to just move my bench block over onto my lap to minimize noise. And again, this is a trick that I use. If you're an apartment dweller like me, you can one, get a, a rubber base bench block like this one. I'll go ahead and link to this in the description so that you can get a block similar to this. If you or an apartment dweller and you want to minimize noise. This helps a lot, but moving this over to my lap rather than doing it on my bench also helps. Okay, so if you can see here, I just have this resting on my thigh. All this does is it really minimizes the noise that we're going to make when we're hammering. So this is not necessary. If noise isn't a concern for you, you can just go ahead and leave your bench block on your work surface. But I like to go ahead and keep things as quiet as I possibly can. So I'm going to go ahead and paddle the end of this wire. And to do that, I'm just using the same chasing technique that I demonstrated in one of my earlier videos. I will link to that video right up here in the right hand corner. And that is lesson one of my hammer series, chasing hammer series that shows you how to planish wire, which is we're going to straighten and shape wire with the planishing head of our hammer. So there's that first paddle and you can see it's a little rough. You can see the cut in there. That's okay. We're going to clean that up with a needle file here shortly. But I'm going to go ahead and flip this around and paddle that other end of the wire first. Okay, and there's our second paddle. So now we can go ahead and go back to our bench and get these paddles cleaned up. We're going to clean it, file them and shape them with a needle file. And then we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, the next tool that we're going to use is our needle file. And this is just a flat file, but it's a very thin, fine file with fine tooth. And one side is a little bit finer than the other. This is the rougher side. So this is the side we're going to use to shape these paddles. And I'm just going to gently smooth off the ends and round off those edges. I want a nice, pretty round edge. 
And notice that I'm only filing in one direction. When you're using a, a file, you don't want to saw back and forth because all that will do is clog up your file. It doesn't, you don't gain anything by going back and forth. These teeth only work in one direction. So just gently file and shape until you get a nice, pretty round edge like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect because again, we're going to, we're going to do some cleanup as we go. And you can see here, there's that cut in. See how we got sort of a flat, sharp edge there. We're just going to round that off gently, smooth it off until you have a nice, pretty round shape. Okay, now that we have these nice, pretty round ends, we're going to go ahead and start forming these pretty curves on our circlet. So I'm going to start with my stuffed bill making pliers and I'm going to use the three millimeter tip, which is the second to the smallest tip right here. So I'm just going to grab right at the tip, close as I can to that tip, and I'm going to gently roll this around. Now you do have to hold on pretty firmly because what will happen is, as you can see there, my pliers want to slip. So grab on firmly and roll that around until you get about three quarters of the way around that tip. See that? I'm going to go just a little bit further. I want a curl just like that. See that? And you can see I made some tool marks there with my pliers because I did have to grip on pretty tightly. That's okay. We're going to clean that up too. I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other end. And we want to make sure that we get both of these curls facing the same direction. So pay attention to which direction this curl is facing. We want to roll this one up the same way. So again, I'm just going to grab firmly as close as I can to that tip and roll around until I get about three quarters of the way around, just like that. And notice now that I've got a tip facing forward this way and one facing this way. So they're both facing up on the same side of the wire. That's super important. And then next we're going to use this six millimeter tip here. So it's the fourth one. So we got one, two, three, four, the fourth size up. And this time I want to grab my curl. I want to rest that curled end on the smaller side here. And then we're just going to wrap that around that six millimeter mandrel, just like that. And you want to get to the point where your wire is touching the wire shaft here. We're going to repeat that on the other side. Again, we rest that curl on the smaller mandrel and wrap it around the larger mandrel. And we end up with that nice curl like that. See that? Okay, now we're going to go back to our bench block and our chasing hammer. And we're going to flatten these edges just a little bit. We want to kind of give these a nice dimensional look. See how they, I've hammered them and they're a little bit thicker here? It just makes for a pretty more sculptural look to your finished piece. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, I'm going to put my bench block on my thigh. Okay. And I'm just using my three and a half ounce chasing hammer. I can use a heavier chasing hammer for this. I have a five and a half ounce that I can also use and that will work just as well. But just to show you that you can, you can hammer 12 gauge wire with a, with a little three and a half ounce hammer. You don't need a heavy ham, heavy duty hammer for this. So I'm just going to go ahead and start Planishing this out and I'm being very careful to avoid catching the curl that I made there. I'll even protect it with my thumbnail as I hammer. And then you can see there we got that nice shape. We have it thicker out here on the edges and we opened up our curve a little bit. That's okay. We're just going to get back in there with our stuffed bill making pliers and just pinch that closed again. And that's all there is to that. 
And now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other side, but you want to make sure that you pay attention. So this is the side that was against my bench block and you can see how flat and smooth that is. Pay close attention to this when you're doing this. This is the side that I hammered and you can see just a few faint tool marks there. We want to always hammer on the same side of the wire and that's so that when we get to the end and when we're finishing our piece we have the nice flat side that was against the bench block. That's the side that we're going to finish. That's going to be the front of our pin and the reason we do that is there are fewer tool marks there to sand out so you get a much nicer finish here than you would if you if you try to finish the side that has the tool marks you're going to get some low spots in there that are going to be hard to sand out so this just saves you time so again you do want to pay close attention to that you want to make sure that you're always hammering on the same side of the wire so this is the side that was facing up this is the side that we hammered we're going to do we're going to hammer on this side of this curve and again i'm just going to protect that little curl and I'm just drawing out these edges with my chasing hammer and of course that opens that curl a bit so you want to just grab your step to bill making pliers again and just gently pinch that closed okay and you can see the tool marks here on this side a little bit better there you go see how there's some tool marks there that's going to create a low spot here that will be hard to sand out. On this side, we have a nice flat surface to work with. So this is going to be the front of our pin once we get to that point where we're ready to start sanding and finishing. Next step is to form our circlet. And to do that, you're going to need a mandrel of some sort, about one and a half inches in diameter. And this is a plumbing fitting. It's a copper copper pipe fitting. This is called a union and these are inexpensive. You can just pick them up at your local hardware store. I have these in several different sizes and I use them as mandrels. You can also use a bracelet mandrel if you like. So if you have a bracelet mandrel, this will work really well for shaping this pin as well. But I like to go ahead and use my, my copper fittings. I use these all the time and it's just something I've sort of gotten so used to using that it's become kind of a signature in my jewelry. These, these particular shapes and sizes are kind of part of my, my jewelry making aesthetic. So we're just going to go ahead and wrap that wire around the mandrel as far as you can get. And you may want to go ahead and grab on with your bail making pliers just to kind of squeeze those ends down onto the mandrel and we're just going to press down so that we get as much of a circle as we possibly can. We want these ends to almost meet in the middle. See that? Okay. And now again, we're going to flatten this part of our circlet because we want to be able to texture it. So we want to flatten it first. So we're going to use our planishing face again to flatten this part of the circlet down. And notice that I didn't flatten all the way. I just got as close as I could to these curls without affecting, I don't want to hammer these. So I protect those while I'm hammering. And then we just get this nice dimensional look here where it starts out round and then it flattens out and comes back to a round wire shape again. See how we did that? All right, so again, very important to pay attention to which side you're hammering on. This side, notice this is very flat and smooth. This is the side that was against the bench block. So when I hammer this circlet, I want to make sure that I put that side down again so that all of my tool marks are end up on the same side, my hammer tool marks from my planishing head. And the reason you get those tool marks is this head is just slightly domed, so it will create some very faint tool marks. And again, you just want to make sure that you always keep those on the same side of your piece so that when you go to finish your piece, you have a nice smooth surface to work with. Okay, so let's go ahead and start planishing our circlet. Again, I'm going to move my camera again, place my bench block right here on my thigh. And again, this isn't something that you absolutely have to do. This is something that I do to minimize noise, but it's not strictly necessary. This is just, you know, a trick that I've learned that does 
help minimize noise when I'm chasing. Now when I'm texturing, I use such light strokes for texturing that it doesn't make anywhere near as much noise as chasing does. But when I'm chasing, I do have to use a fair amount of force and there's quite a bit more hammering than there is when I'm texturing. So that's why I put it on my thigh when I'm chasing. All right, let's go ahead and get started. And notice, Notice that as I'm hammering, I'm drawing my hammer out this direction. I'm using that drawing stroke because I want to thicken this line and I want to pull it out toward me. I'm just working my way around the circlet. And notice here I'm changing the shape of this quite a bit. It's closing up, so I'm just going to pull that open just a little bit. And I'm going to keep working my way around I want to get this as evenly flat as I can. So I want to make sure that, you know, if the width is pretty consistent around this top edge, you can see here, there's a couple of spots. You see that there's a couple of spots, like it's a little bit narrower right here. So I'm going to work on that a little bit more, pull that out some. And again, you can see that that closed a little bit. So we're just gonna put that back on our mandrel. Just stretch it out and get back on our mandrel. And because I stretched that wire quite a bit, now I've got these overlapping here at the bottom. So I am gonna go ahead and use my bracelet mandrel to widen that out just a little bit. I want just a little bit of a gap so that my pin can pass through it. So here's my bracelet mandrel and I'm just gonna slide this on and slide it down the mandrel until I get to a point where I have a little bit of a gap there, about right there. And then once again, your your ends will open. That just happens as part of the part of the process. Whenever you're hammering, you're always going to open up any bends that you have. It'll change the shape of your piece a little bit. So you just want to press those back into place. And here's our circlet. I like the way this turned out with a tighter gap. It came out quite a bit tighter than this other piece here. See that? And that's going to give us a little bit better we're going to have, you know, less room for that pin to kind of get loose on us. So that's going to work out really well. Now notice here, I've got all these tool marks on this side, right? Both on the front here, these, these smaller curves and on the circlet, but on the back, I have a nice flat, even surface that I can work on. So this now again is going to become the front of our circlet. And at this point we can go ahead and start texturing. Now again, texturing doesn't require anywhere near as much force when you're hammering. We're going to use much lighter strokes. And again, I'm going to make sure that I have the front face toward me. So this is the side that was against the bench block initially. You can see this is the side that we hammered. We're going to texture on this other side. And that's just going to give us these ends here. It's going to give us nice smooth ends to work with when we start sanding and polishing those ends a bit. All right, so to texture, this is a, a practice exercise from last week's video. So last week I showed you how to go ahead and use this ball end of your chasing hammer to texture wire. And we're going to do exactly like we did in that video. We're going to start on one edge and we're going to texture one edge of the wire. And then we're going to focus on the inner edge and texture that until we have a nice, even 
texture across the full width of our wire. It's going to look something like this when we're done. And of course, this is all after it's polished and, and shined up. So this is what it's going to look like when it's completely finished. Now to do this again, you don't want to use heavy strokes. You want to use fairly light strokes and we're just going to focus, intentionally focus on the edges of the wire. And I'm going to work my way around that edge using fairly light strokes. slowly around, make sure I scallop those edges, Okay, so there's our scalloped edge. Can you see that? And we got a few strokes there in the middle, but we were really focusing on the edge. And you can see there's a little spot there where I have quite a big gap. So I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to fill in any gaps that I see. So we'll just get that evened out. And again, you can see that my wire is wanting to get smaller here. It's kind of coming in on itself. And that happens sometimes. So you just want to keep kind of working it back into shape where you want it. And we're going to get just a little bit of a gap between those ends. I'm just going to stretch it out just a little bit. There we go. All right, now we're going to focus on this inner edge. So we got our outer edge. We got a nice scalloped edge there. See how that's starting to really catch the light? That's what we're after. We want that nice, pretty light play going on there. Okay, so now let's get this inner edge. And again, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to focus on the inner edge instead of the outer. We'll work our way slowly around. Okay, and now you can see that we've got the whole surface of the wire textured. You see how that works? When you really focus on the edges, you get that nice light play there where it really captures and reflects the light, but it also, you end up texturing the whole surface of your wire and you get this nice even texture. This works quite a bit better than if you focus on the center Sometimes if you do that, you'll, you'll end up with, you know, a pretty nice texture in the middle, but then you don't get that really pretty light play because the edges don't get textured. So focus your attention on the edges when you're working with wire. This is a little bit different than if you're working with sheet metal. If you're covering uh, an area of sheet metal, you want to get even texture on the whole sheet, but with wire and you have such a narrow space here, it's really those edges that give you the light play that you're after. So work on the edges. All right, so that concludes the most difficult part of this whole process. Okay, I talked quite a bit about finishing in my Fleur de Lis make along series. If you haven't already watched that series, I'll go ahead and link to it right up here in the upper right hand corner. So I'm not gonna get as um, in depth today as I did in that video because sanding and finishing takes quite a while. So I'm not going to show the whole process here, but this is basically what I do. I start with three grits of wet, wet or dry sandpaper, and this is sandpaper that's designed for the automotive industry. So it works really well on metal. And I use 800, 1500, and 2000 grit sandpaper. Now this is just a quarter sheet of sandpaper. So I, I fold and tear my sheets into quarters and then I fold them again. And I just use this portion as I'm sanding. And again, this is three grits. It's 800, 1500, and 2000 grit. And I will link to this in the description below. 
so that you can find the sandpaper and you, this is use the same stuff that I use if you're interested. And now we're just going to focus on these curled edges. We don't want to sand where we textured because we don't want to change that texture. And I can see a little a little spot there that I missed, so I may have to go back and touch up my texture just a little bit too. But we're just really going to focus on these ends and right here we're going to get those tool marks that we created when we were forming those curls. So I'm going to start with my 800 grit paper and I'm just going to gently buff out any tool marks. I'm going to smooth off the edges here. I'm just lightly sanding. And then I'm going to really, I'm going to twist this just a bit, twist it open like a jump ring so that I can focus on one edge at a time. And I'm really going to focus on the edges here because I want to create a nice, soft, sculpted look. I don't want any hard edges, hard corners here. I just want this wire to nice and, you know, have a nice, soft, curved edge. So I'm going to break down those edges with that 800 grit sandpaper. And then I'm going to sand out any tool marks there so I can get that surface. See how it has a nice even matte finish now? That's what I'm after. I want that even matte finish. And again, I'm just going to keep working at this until I'm happy with the shape. 800 is what I'm using to shape with. Now if I have any really deep tool marks that I need to get out, I don't have any on this. But if I did, if I had a big deep scratch there, then I also have this set of sanding sticks that I use. And these range from 400 grit to 3000 grit. So I'll use this 400 grit sanding board to sand out any really deep scratches or gouges in my wire. But for right now, I don't need to use those. This 800 grit is working just fine. So I'm just going to keep on sanding and shaping until I get a look that I'm really satisfied with. And you can see how those corners are starting to soften. See how they're, they don't have that sharp edge that these have? There's looks almost like a beveled edge there, whereas this is starting to soften a bit. It's looking a little, a little more like a sculpted edge. And that's what you want. So when we finish, at the end of the process, we have these nice, smooth, rounded edges. See that? That's what we're after. And this takes a while, so just keep working at it. Work on one side and then flip it around and work on the other side. And get those edges sanded smooth as well. Get rid of any tool marks. And then once you finish with the 800 grit, you're going to go ahead and move up to the 1500 grit and then the 2000 until you have a nice clean, shiny, smooth surface. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off camera and then I'll be back to show you the end result. Okay, so this is what my piece looks like after sanding with 800, 1500, and 2000 grit sandpaper. And you can see it has just a very sort of a soft matte finish there with that 2000 grit. Now if you want to take that a step further, that's where these sanding boards come in really handy. I go ahead and use my 3000 grit sanding board to just shine these up just a little bit more. And you just want to give them a good rub and you can see how quickly that brings out that shine. So again, we're just touching these up with 3000 grit sanding board, which is the white board. And it doesn't take a lot. Once you have it pretty smooth and you've sanded out all the scuff marks and things with your sandpaper, then this just brings out that shine really easily. Now you can see there, there's a little bit of a dull spot there. That's because that's a little bit of a low spot. Whenever you hammer, you're going to create low spots. So again, you just want to 
these boards have a little bit of give to them. They have a foam core, so you just want to press down in there and get that nice and shined up. And you can see there's still just a little bit more, so I'll probably work on that a little bit more before I'm ready to completely finish this piece. And these sanding boards, I've only found them available through Rio Grande. So again, I've linked to these in the description. You can get sanding boards on Amazon, but what you're gonna find is they're super, super fine grits. So even, you know, smoother than 3000 grit. And those are intended mainly for resin jewelry, resin work, that kind of thing. These boards, this range of grits from 400 to 3000 works really, really well on metal for jewelry. So again, these are available through Rio Grande. I will link to them in the description if you're interested in using these boards. And I do like these a lot. I use them quite a bit. I rely more on sandpaper, but when it comes to doing super fine finishing with that 3000 grit. I really like that one a lot. So go ahead and try those out if you like. And at this point, we are ready to go ahead and finish our circlet. We're just going to bind these curls here. Anytime you have a loose end on wire, you want to bind it down if you can. So we're just going to use a simple binding technique. And I demonstrated this in my Lucky You earring series. Again, I'll link right up here in the right hand corner if you're interested in checking that series out if you haven't already seen it. And you're just gonna need about five inches of 26 gauge dead soft wire. You'll need two pieces, one for each curl. So I'm just gonna, I'm estimating these, they're about five inches, five or six inches is what you need. Okay, and to do this, we are just going to place that wire. You wanna get an end that's about a little over an inch long and hang on to that. And we're just gonna wrap this tightly around that curl and we're going to bind it to the shaft of the pin and we're going to wrap three times so there's one two and three and then we're going to take this wire where it starts on this side we're just going to slide it under those three wraps and you can use your chain nose pliers here to help with this we're just going to pull that wire firmly so that we have a nice clean pass through see where that passes through the wire. So we've got three wraps and then we've got that wire coming right in there. And we're just going to loop that through there twice. We want to make two passes over the top of those wraps. So there's one and I'm going to pull that nice and snugly. And if your wire doesn't want to wrap tightly, see how that sticks up just a little bit? You can just kind of press that down with your chain nose pliers. And you can see I got that a little more snugly pressed down on there. Just press with the solid part of your pliers. So there's one pass and then I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna do one more pass. I'm gonna slide that over as far as I can to one edge. So I push that over toward that small curl and then I'm gonna pass through again. You may need to fish that through there. Grab a hold of that end, a little bit hard to get and pull it through again and pull that snug. And again, you may need to press down on that a little bit to get that nice and snug in there. And then give it a good solid tug to make sure it's tight. And then we're gonna go ahead and break this tail. So I'm going to grab as close as I can to the point where it comes under those three wraps and I'm gonna tug and swirl until it breaks. See how I did that? And that gives me a nice clean break you can see the end of the wire. You can just see it under there, but you can't feel it. So it's not going to catch on anything. It's nice and smooth. And this is really important when you're doing any kind of jewelry that's going to be used on knitted or crocheted garments. You want to make sure that there's nothing that's going to snag. So all our edges need to be nice and smooth because we don't want to damage any of those handmade goods. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing on this side. So we're coming around here. I'm going to go through and under those three wraps and I'm going the same direction with the, the wires coming out on this side. So I'm going through that direction. I don't want to cross over. I'm just going to pull that nice and snug. So again, we have these nice, neat wraps. You see how that's nice and tight there. You can't really even see that that partial wrap. And then we're going to loop through twice. So there's once. Press that wrap down, pull it snug, and twice. And again, press that down nice and snugly. And then you can press your two wraps together. See how nice and neat that binding is? And you end up with no sharp 
pokey ends sticking out. We're going to break this wire just like we did the first one. So we're going to tug, pull tight, get some tension on that wire, and swirl it around until it breaks. Just like that. And we have this nice, pretty binding that adds a little bit of detail to our piece, but it's also practical because it keeps this end from catching on something and getting pulled away from the pin. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and repeat that on the other side of our circlet. Once again, we want to wrap three times around that curl. So there's one, two, and three. And then we're going to feed this wire through those three, underneath those three wraps and pull tight. And go ahead and use your chain nose pliers to pull that snugly if you need to. You want to get a nice clean pass through there. And then we're going to pass through here two times before we break off this tail. So there's one. And I'm going to press that down, get it nice and firm, and then second pass, and again, and just press those together with your nails. We want them to line up nice and neatly together. Press that down snugly, and tug, and swirl. And then we will repeat on the back side. So on this side, our wire is coming around this way, so we want to go up and under this direction so that we get a nice, neat binding. See how that works out? And get those wires lined up neatly in there. And then we're gonna pass through under those three wraps two times. So there's one, we'll pull tightly and press, and two, and again, pull that nice and snug. And then we're gonna push those two wraps together so that they stay nice and neat, neatly lined up together. And again, tug and swirl. And there you go. Those are nice and tightly bound. And our circlet is finished. Now we just need to make our pin. So this pin, as you can see, this is also made with 12 gauge wire. And you can see I flattened it just a little bit. I didn't texture it. I just flattened it and polished it. And we made a similar curl like we did here, only a much smaller. Notice I didn't, I didn't bend that curl around too much. And that's because I don't want this to snag on anything. I want it curled just enough that I can get a nice tight closure. To make your pin, you're gonna need three to three and a half inches of dead soft 12 gauge wire again. I'm gonna go ahead and cut three inches cause I'm pretty comfortable. I've made a couple of these now and I know I know how much wire I'm going to need. So I don't feel like that's gonna be too little wire. If you're not sure, if you're a little bit uncomfortable, go ahead and cut three and a half inches. Give yourself a little bit of slack there. And again, I'm using my heavy duty wire cutters to cut that wire. We're not concerned about getting a flush edge on this because we're going to paddle the ends and do some filing anyway. Now notice that this wire is a little bit crooked and 12 gauge wire is pretty tough to straighten with your fingers or even with your nylon jaw pliers. I often use these for straightening wire, but even those are going to, you know, you're going to have a hard time getting those, those little slot slight bends out. So I'm going to show you my favorite trick for straightening wire. I use my bench block and then I use the wood wedge for my ring clamp. Now this ring clamp I use to hold wire when I'm weaving and this is a really really great tool for weaving. You've probably seen me using this in some of my weaving demonstrations and in, and in the make alongs I use this tool all the time. But this wedge here works really well for straightening your wire. So to straighten wire I just put my wire on my bench block and then I just roll this wedge across it. And you can see that this wire doesn't even want to roll because those bends there. So we're going to get it rolling a little bit and you just want to press firmly and just keep rolling until and you may need to actually press some of those bends out to get them to roll. So I'm just going to press down firmly and, and once you start get the, your wire start rolling and notice how much noise it makes as it gets straighter it's going to make less noise and you'll notice that sound kind of change as you get those bends worked out of there that's much straighter. There's still just the slightest little bend in there. So you can keep working at that if you like. Just keep rolling. 
press down firmly. I'm putting down a fair amount of pressure on that wire. And that's looking quite a bit better. See, much straighter. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and paddle one end of our wire. So again, I'm going to put my bench block on my thigh, bring you along for the ride here. A little bit tricky to do with my current camera setup, but we'll make it work. There we go, that's better. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and see how this chisel tip here is pretty sharp. I'm gonna go ahead and paddle this end. This is the end that we're gonna use to wrap around our circlet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paddle that in just like I did on the original circlet. There we go, you see that? And then we're gonna go ahead and smooth that off with our needle file. And I'm just going to gently file that round that edge off file that sharp end off okay that looks quite a bit better so that just a little bit of a sharp edge there pretty good okay so now again you want to find the side that was against your bench block and you can see that side there is the one with the tool marks from the chasing hammer and this is my nice flat edge now we didn't actually flatten much of that so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this back on my bench block I'm gonna flatten it just a little bit more I want to come back to a point I want some of this flattened portion to be visible from the front. Not a lot. I don't want to widen it out too much because we don't want to stretch any garments that we put this through. If this goes through a fine knit, we don't want to stretch that out too much. So I'm just going to widen that out and taper that out just a little bit with my chasing hammer. And again, I'm going to find the side that has the tool marks. That would be this side. That's going to be the side that faces up on my bench block. So we're just going to take our hammer and we're just going to flatten a little bit more of that. Okay, that looks a little bit better. So you see now we've got a little bit of a flat spot there. That's gonna show up on the front of our pin. So now we're gonna go ahead and shape that pin and I'm going to use the smaller pin here. So this is the two millimeter pin and I'm going to find the front side of my pin and we're gonna bend this up toward the front side. So we're going to go again, grab that tip firmly and just gently roll it just a little bit. We're not gonna make much of a bend there. Do a little bit more than that, just about like that. See how soft that curve is? We don't want a heavy curve because we don't want a piece that's going to snag, but we do want just a little bit of a bend there. So you can kind of keep rolling that until you're happy with it. I'm gonna create just a little, exaggerate that just a little bit more. There we go. That's about perfect. That's what I want. See how soft that curve is? And now we're going to go ahead and grip between our pliers and we're gonna bend around this three millimeters. So I'm gonna hang on firmly and just bend that around. Now you don't wanna close it all the way. So we're just going to close it about that much. And then we can go ahead and connect it. We're going to lay it across our circlet and then Go ahead and get in there with your stiffed bell making pliers again and just gently squeeze that shut. And that did not work. Okay, so let's do that over. We made our first curve with that two millimeter step, right? We just made that soft, gentle curve. And now we're gonna use this four millimeter step instead of the three millimeter. We need just a little bit more because I flattened this you can see that this is a little bit thicker than this piece. So instead of using the three millimeter step like I did on this one, we're gonna have to use that four millimeter step to give this a little bit more room to swing. Otherwise it's too tight and it won't swing out properly. So I'm just going to get in there with that four millimeter 
step and I'm just going to roll this around. Not quite all the way. You don't want to close it all the way because we want to leave enough room to put it on our circlet first. And then you just want to lay it across your circlet just like that. This is how it's going to look when it's finished. And then we can go ahead and pinch that closed so you can get in there with your two millimeter step again and just press that closed. So now we get a nice firm closure, but we have enough play here that this will flip back and forth on the pin. And you can see there's a couple points where it's a little snug. That's okay. We're just going to go ahead and run with that. And you can also see here that I got it just a little bit crooked. So I'm just going to get in there with my flat nose pliers and grip that edge and kind of gently straighten that out so that we have this end here more centered on the shaft of our pin. And that looks a little bit better. Now you can see a little bit of that soft curl there at the end on both sides. And again, this, this does slide pretty loosely up here at the top. It doesn't want to, it's a little bit tighter. That's okay. We want it to be a little bit snug. We don't want it to be so loose that it flops around, but we do want to be able to move this pin out because we want to be able to attach this to our garment. So that feels pretty good there. And you can see that we've got a little bit of that flat spot there, a little bit kind of a pretty, adds a little bit of dimension to it. And then you can see also that our pin is just a little bit long. So I want to find the widest part of my pin and I'm going to lay that pin right across there. And this is a little bit long. I'm going to go ahead and trim that off just a little. And this is personal preference. You can leave it as long as you like. I like mine to be a little bit shorter. So I'm going to take off about, oh, that's maybe a quarter of an inch. So that's probably about a half of an inch of overhang there, this widest point. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut that in half. So I'm going to take about a quarter of an inch off. And again, I'm using my heavy duty wire cutters there. Don't use your smaller cutters. Those are designed for smaller gauge wire. And you can see now that I'm gonna have just about a quarter of an inch of overhang there. Okay, so our pin is almost finished. Now we just wanna go ahead and shape this into a nice soft point. We don't want this to be super sharp, but we want a nice sort of a pencil tip there. Can you see how I filed that? into a soft point and it's not, again, it's not super sharp. I, I filed off the end and smoothed it. So it's kind of a, a dull tip because you know, you don't want anybody to get hurt with it. And you also don't want any sharp points there that are going to split yarn. So this nice sort of blunt point is going to slide nicely through a knitted or a crochet garment without, without piercing yarn and you know, separating fibers. So that's what we want. And that's what we're going for. And again, we're going to use our needle file for that. And we're just going to just kind of get in here at a, at a low angle and just start working our way around that tip. And you can just kind of rotate it around and keep filing until you get a nice point. Try to keep your strokes nice and even. Try to keep the uh, edge of your point even so that it, you know, has a nice line all the way around. Just keep working that into a nice point, like a pencil point. And you can see there, I've got a pretty sharp point there. And it's a little bit flat on one side. So I'm just going to keep working my way until I get it nice and round. And then I'm going to smooth off that tip. I want it to be a sort of a blunt point. You want it sharp enough to glide through the fabric, through a knitted or crochet fabric, 
but not so sharp that it pierces the yarn fibers and separates the yarn. So just keep working at it. This takes a while. And you'll get better at this as you do it. It's this is sort of an odd, you know, this is something we don't typically do with wire, file things to a to a point. So it takes a while to kind of get get a knack for it and get a nice even finish all the way around. And then we're just going to take our sandpaper. Again, we're going to start with 800 grit and start smoothing that out. We're going to get rid of any of the tool marks that we created. So I'm just going to work my way around. And just keep sanding lightly. And just rotate the pin as you work. And check and see. You can see we've got some pretty deep scratches there, so I'm just going to keep working that. You can, you can wrap that sandpaper around and twist. You can slide it back and forth and try to get rid of those tool marks that we made from the file. We need some deep scratches there. We want to get those out. And you're just going to keep doing that until we're pretty happy with the way it looks. You're going to have, you're going to want a dull matte finish that's even and consistent and you don't want any deep scratches in there. And once you get to that point, we're going to go ahead and I'm flipping this over to the back so that I don't damage my texture. I don't want to sand on the textured side, but I'm going to go ahead and sand this portion too. I want to get any tool marks out of that, the back of that, or the front of that pin. We're working on the back of the circlet, but the front of the pin. We're going to get that sanded nice and smooth. And then you can flip it over and get any tool marks from your curved end there. Go ahead and sand those out. And then again, you're just going to keep sanding until you're satisfied with the finish that you have with your 800 grit. And then you're going to move up to the 1500 and then the 2000 and ultimately the 3000 grit sanding stick if you want to use that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off camera. Once again, I finished sanding with my 800, 1500, and 2000 grit sandpaper, and you can see I've got just sort of a really soft matte finish on there, and I'm just going to go ahead and touch that pin up with my 3000 grit sanding stick, sanding board, and we'll just shine that up just a little bit. And you can see how quickly that brings out that shine, and I can go ahead and work all sides of this pin. We're just going to polish that up real quickly. It doesn't take a lot of effort. It shines up pretty quickly. And there you go. So there's our pin. It is complete and ready to patina if you like. Or you can just, this is ready to wear too. You can just go ahead and Add it to your favorite scarf, your favorite shawl. It works on sweaters, any kind of knitted or crochet garment. And you can see this pin's just a little bit tight. It's a little snug. It doesn't want to slide as easily as I'd like. And that's because we flattened this out quite a bit more. So you've got to take that into consideration when you're forming your pin. As you saw initially, I was going to use this three millimeter step and that's what I used on this pin. So this one was formed with a three millimeter step. But this pin is a little bit narrower. The flattened portion of the circlet is a little bit narrower than this one. I flattened that out quite a bit more. Can you see how much wider that is? So I had to add a little bit more width to this pin. So I went ahead and bumped that up from the three millimeter step to the four millimeter step. And I had to kind of reform that. And like I say, it's still a little bit tight in some places, like right there. 
it's a little snug it kind of wants to catch it will it will flip it will turn but you're gonna have better luck it's gonna be easier to turn this one from down here so this is a pen I probably wouldn't sell this is one I'll definitely keep for personal use and I would you know I'll wear it it's not one I would want to gift or sell but there you go that is your finished circlet and then I went ahead and patinaed this one just to show you the difference there so this is this is raw copper before it's been polished or patinaed I went ahead and patinaed this and then rather than tumble polishing it which you can tumble these for sure and that will actually help harden them and you know if you just leave them in your tumbler for several hours it'll harden it up a little bit and it'll give you a nice high high shine polish but rather than tumbling this I just went ahead and patinaed it and then I polished it with a pro, pad, pro polish pad so that's what I use to remove the excess patina and then I went ahead and polished it with sunshine cloth this is an old one that that I used to clean my bench but I just used a, a sunshine polishing cloth to go ahead and touch that finish up when I was done so this has not been tumbled and that's the kind of finish that I managed to get with just these two items a pro polish pad and a sunshine polishing cloth so that's always a an option to polish by hand if you like if you have a rotary tool you can make really quick work of polishing these with a rotary tool and the right attachments you get some nice polishing attachments and a you know a polishing um, compound you can polish really quickly with a rotary tool I don't have a rotary tool presently because I don't have the proper bench set up for it so this is the I just you know want you to know that this is the kind of result that you can get just finishing by hand with just a polishing cloth and these pro pads so I also have a video on that process if you want to see that you'll find that I'll link to it right up here again that is the technique that I use to clean my patina jewelry like jewelry in my collection that I need to touch up the polish on it I'll just use these two products the the pro polish pads and the sunshine cloth to touch up the finish on my finished jewelry once I've patinaed a piece of jewelry I rarely tumble it again if it gets really dirty for some reason um, I may go ahead and, and tumble polish it but typically I'll just hand polish my finished jewelry and like I say this is the kind of result that you can get with just those two products you don't have to have a tumbler you can get by with just using simple polishing products and you can get really great results all it takes is a little elbow grease and some patience so that's it for today wire weavers I hope you enjoyed this fun little project be sure to stay tuned because I have a more complex bananular brooch coming up that's going to involve some wire weaving and we're going to add some gemstones and do a little bit more of an elaborate design. So that's a project that's going to be coming up in a few weeks. Be sure to watch for that. And until next time, go make something beautiful. Mm -hmm.